Hello. Today we're going to talk about something very, very exciting. Uh, it's the new Eon AI generated content solution that we are releasing this month on March 23rd. And this is very exciting of many reasons. First of all, it's first of its kind. And today, in a few minutes, you'll actually see it. You'll see how it works and why this is such an indispensable component in knowledge transfer. Let's have a look. But first, perhaps looking back on our evolution. So back in time, when you created extended reality content, you had to do uh, this with experts. So we, Eon's own staff, developed content for our customers. Eventually, the, this content was generated still by human, but uh, by users themselves. And what's new and what I'll present today is how this is taking over by artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence generated extended reality content on the fly. So looking back, you see here that we had in the past required programming skills, our own staff most, mostly utilized uh, to develop. We had used to have large uh, design centers that only focused on that. And in 2019, we came with what we thought was a revolution, it was at that time, is code-free content creation of extended reality, which really wasn't possible to do in, in an easy way, uh, as, as you've seen with our products in the past. And now comes 2023 and beyond what we see this new generation. Uh, the first version actually we had in December generates 43 different features automatically. Voice, text, images, videos, PDFs, voice recordings, picture text, quizzes, identify, helping in many different ways. But today, you're actually going to see the next level. Okay, so, but let's put it be a little bit in the context. What are experts saying and what are experts predicting about the future of AI with respect to content creation? Let's have a listen. But what generative AI can do essentially is create new things that would have thus far been seen as unique to human intelligence or creativity. And generative AI can create across all media. So text, video, audio, um, every pictures, every digital medium can be powered by generative AI. So I think these valuations that you're... So very interesting to say that she didn't mention in that video the aspect of extended reality, which is a very important thing, both in the real world and in the virtual world. But still, I do agree with her on the conclusion. Let's listen in. So I actually think if I think about that stat, I might actually say I have a different view on that. I think we might reach 90% uh, of online content generated by AI by 2025. So 90% of on, online content generated by AI by 2025. That's a big, big, big statement. But today we're going to see that that's possible using EON's latest technology to do this month on a normal regular device and you can do it in extended and virtual augmented reality so let's first analyze the ai problem today most ai solutions whether it's open ai's chat gpt or google solution or any other is a brain in a jar meaning that it lacks context it lacks the physical world it doesn't provide an experiential solution. So that's where our spatial AI solution comes in. In essence, it takes out the AI genie out of the bottle. The AI it provides a digital body. It's a friendly AI knowledge companion that helps you instantly to acquire the knowledge you need to solve problems in your daily life. And it has about 43 features. It applies these features by showing you and telling you things in a virtual world. But also, here's the interesting thing, and you'll see it today, guide you and assist you in the real world, okay? Now, the way we do it, I'm not going to be too techy on you, but we are using a number of features that everybody has in their pocket today. Six billion people have a mobile device. 
that provides us the geoposition, that provides us the ability to recognize things with AI image recognition. The modern phones have also LiDAR that provides us a connection through the cloud to more than 6 million 3D assets and growing that Eon has currently, etc., etc. So that's kind of the technology behind it. But today we're not going to focus so much on technology. We're going to focus on the experience, what you as a user will experience this month using our product. So, a couple of headlines. First of all, it is your co-pilot. It is your humble assistant. It provides you the AI-generated content. It doesn't require any instructions for beginners. This is the key. You can pick up your phone, open it up. The AI avatar will guide you throughout the whole creation process. So it's simple. It's inclusive. It creates things at the speed that is unprecedented and of ultimately provides you great, great value. There's a number of prompts and things that I'm not going to go through too details because I'm so eager to get you guys experiencing it. So uh, let's dive straight in. So here's the being a techie. I want to kind of give you the map of what we're going to visit. So you have three options when you approach the AI assistant. You can create and you can do that today in freestyle or well, using something called prompts. Prompts are things that help you in the process to guide you in the creation process. You can explore the real world and illuminate, inject knowledge in the physical world. And ultimately, you can just consume a library of pre-existing components, very much that you browse Netflix, but in this case, in augmented virtual reality. During this process, the avatar will help you. It will show you and tell you things in any language you want using knowledge portals. What, we, what is knowledge portal? It's not only text that we accumulate from AI. It's not only voice because it talks to you. But it also is images that you can request and place in a three-dimensional environment. Videos, three-dimensional objects, environment. Um, and even 360. So it's a very rich way and multimodal well to, to, to be able to show and tell. But it also assesses you. So it can find things for you in the real and the virtual world. It can identify things. So it's that very smart assistant that can uh, help you, guide you, but also assess your knowledge. Doesn't stop there can also help you to interact. So if you want to generate things and superimpose things virtual or real, such as fire, explosion, smoke, interactions, it can help you do that. And finally, you can train it. You can train it on your specific data, meaning that if you have PDFs, images, things that you don't want to maybe share in the public domain that are proprietary, but you want to provide them to your AI assistant for confidentially for all your employees or customers, you can do that. Okay, so now that we show you the map, let's dive in. First, we're going to create and we're going to do it freestyle mode, meaning that there's no guidance. We're just going to dive straight in. The first thing you're going to see is when you point and click it to your phone, so you pick up your phone, you download the app, the app, uh, the original app is free to, to try. Obviously, after a while, you have to have a license. But you pick it up, you open the, the, the app, and this comes out. And it asks you to place your avatar. Uh, once you place the avatar, the avatar pops up in your room. Once you place the avatar in the room, the first thing uh, the avatar is asking is, what would you like to do? Uh, and it gives you three options. You can create an AI-generated show-and-tell experience in the virtual world. You can explore AI guidance and assistant in the real world. Or you can just enjoy the library and applications. So, And there's a lot of things that you can browse. Basically, as I said, almost like Netflix, but in extended reality. So let's see. Um, okay. So... Um, now, if you, let's say, have the free license, you can also, you'll enjoy it for 30 days. And after that, you will have to, if you like the system, you like to, you will have to buy a license. Uh, now, let's say I want to create. 
so it I can speak freely what and what I want to create and it gives you two choices would you like to create freely or would you like to create guided okay so in this case I say I want to create freely so free creation unscripted creation option for extended reality experience with support of the avatar allowing you for creation of personalized and virtual experiences so that's what I did now the next one it asks you for a keyword. It says, please provide me with a keyword for the topic you want to create as an XR experience. Hmm. So I say jet engine. I happen to be an engineer uh, that used to work with jet engine in the past and rockets. So I'm fascinated by that topic. Yeah. So the first thing that's going to do is going to start giving you a description of a jet engine on the left side but also show you that description that you can click on with more information if you want in the virtual or in this case, augmented reality world. So a jet engine is a type of aircraft engine that works by taking in air, compressing it, etc., etc. But it doesn't stop there. It actually generates on the fly the top components, the inlet, the compressor, the combustor, the turbine, the exhaust. So the key elements of a jet engine in a bullet format. Now the system, you may, if you're a little bit techy, what was the prompt behind this? Provide me with a short description about the jet engine and the top 10 components in a bullet format one to 10. So this is invisible for the user, but this is what happens in the background. Now, once we have the text and we have the first knowledge portal component, it says a jet engine so now it's talking to you and verbally uh, reciting what's in the text and next is an image so it selects a suitable image that depicts the jet engine and next is a video so now you have a video you can click on it but you can also expand it so it, uh, it covers the whole screen and next, it doesn't stop there, it shows you this table. Uh, and this depicts different type of engines from our very large library. This can be from the library itself, it can be from assets that you have imported, it can be from uh, other third-party licenses that we have integrated, such as Sketchfab, and you can pick one. There are symbols here. So this, for example, says that there is annotations on it, this color says that it's a medium size model in terms of heaviness. Uh, this one says that uh, it has also an animation. So you, you get a very clear picture. Now, if of some reason you don't find what you want, you can also have a schematic of the engine, a two dimensional version or import your own or scan a 3D. So it's impossible not to get something that you want irrespective of the topic. And this is very important for inclusiveness. So now I selected that 3D model, it's highlighted. So uh, I see it uh, and I can explore it, expand it, uh, explode in different components, etc. Now let's say I didn't find what I like, so then I can pick a schematic image instead. And then again, the image uh, pops up in, in place and I can explore the image and connect it with the various components. So now comes the components. So for each of these components, the system can also generate text, image, video for the top components. This is done automatically, okay? And more interesting, these components are also placed in space. So now I have the annotations linked to my 3D model. No human intervention, it's automatically done. So far, we, the system identified the components, it places there. Now, what I can do is uh, let start highlighting different components. So let's say I click on inlet. It's gonna generate me a text, a video, and an image, just by clicking on them. Same thing for compressor, same thing for combustor. So this is a very intuitive way to, to learn about these components, okay? Now, the next step is that 
let's say I want to link those components with the physical or the virtual object, I can do that manually. Uh, I, there's also an automatic way to do it, but in this case, I'll do it manually. So what I'll do is I'm, I've am i exploded the engine and components and I can use my chopstick that you see there and I can drag either the, the annotation, in this case, the inlet and link it with the inlet, link it to the fan, link it to the bearing and shafts. Okay, so now I'm that now I'm fully annotated. I have connections between the two. Um, I can do assessment. So that means that I can ask uh, the system to generate automatically the assessment components, such as locate a component, identify what this component is, generate quizzes, generate a 3D recording. What does that mean? Is that I record a process when I disassemble, assemble this, and the avatar that is will record it and basically show up and with my voice do that process of recording with the standard operation procedure but it can also do 3d assessment this is interesting so the ability to allow a user to look what i've shown him try it himself and then click on 3d assessment to assess if they've done the right thing and be uh, evaluated Okay, so now I have the whole connection. So now I can start to suggest questions to ask. And as I'm asking questions, the avatar will not only tell me and answer those questions freely, but it will also contextualize the questions by showing me the different things. So that's what we refer to as show and tell. Now, this is possible to do with a 3D model but also without a 3D model. When I don't have a 3D model, it will just highlight, when I say they mentioned the word combustor, it will highlight that image so I know the context of the story. Okay, so that was what we call freestyle. Now, there is another way to do this. It's called prompt-based guided mode. This is for people that have an interest in specific areas, but don't know how to arrive to that. So this is even a, believe it or not, even an easier way to create. So this is segmented in different areas. So we have one area, of course, education is one of the big areas. So it will ask you which segment you're interested in. Are you interested in education? Are you interested in enterprise, which is a big area for us? Or even we have something new we call edutainment, which I'm very excited about. But let's say in this case, of course, I'm going for education as a start. Uh, there are 87 categories here, so it's a lot. So if you're interested in that, you'll get access to this uh, information and you can click on the link and you'll see a full report, which I'm sparing you from today, uh, covering all this area. So let's say one category area is technical vocational training and other ones liberal arts etc so if i click on technical vocational training i'll get many different everything from advanced manufacturing agriculture to criminal justice etc so i have to select one so i select advanced manufacturing um, now when i select advanced manufacturing it or aircraft maintenance, for each of these, I can get a detailed description of what the features and applications are within that specific area. So um, I can just click on this aircraft maintenance and it will take me there. The same thing for automotive technology, uh, same thing for culinary arts or forensic science, something that I'm quite macabre and interior design, more, perhaps more closer to my interest, plumbing, hospitality and tourism, a big area for us. Um, then you can also go to other areas such as healthcare. So dentistry, medicine, nursing. Uh, you can go to other areas like aerospace engineering, for example, or biological sciences film and media, you start to get it now, how this works. So drill down and then get instructions what to do in each of those areas, philosophy, archeology, span dance, business. Now, similar approach is in the enterprise space. 
Um, let's say in this case, I select enterprise. And now I have an enterprise segment. There are certain segments where this is applicable more than others. One of these are manufacturing. So in the manufacturing space, you will see areas such as automotive, consumer goods, electronics, heavy industry. Now, what can you do in manufacturing? So these are example of use cases. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can request a video, how this is used for training and certification, how this is used for maintenance and repair, uh, for example. So in uh, the AI system can provide a hands-on training certification for new employees. And they are using voice, text, images to train on that. In the maintenance repair area, we can provide you with maintenance and repair instruction with visual aids, including identifying and locating components. For assembly line workers, this can be used for uh, including text, voice, images, videos, and 3D objects. For hazardous material, how can you handle those materials in a safe way, including proper disposal, protective equipment, and all this can be done in an AR-based instruction modality. Onboarding, onboarding orientation of employees by providing them a personalized guidance and support using an overlay, voice commands, and an avatar guidance. Safety training, a biggie. This is, again, similar to the previous one, but in this case, provide training for all the employees using this type of simulation environment. And uh, also things like remote collaboration. Keep in mind, E.ON has the ability to do spatial meetings. So invite people from other locations in the same location as you. Uh, multilingual, <clears throat> we, in the previous version, we supported 25 languages. In this version, we are going up to 80 five languages. So our goal is to progress uh, to most languages in the world. Um, equipment optimization, the ability to provide real-time feedback on machine performance. So this is connecting with IoT, for example. Um, the other ability is inventory management. So overlay real-time inventory information and guide workers through the process of locating and picking and packing items. So that's on that. Let's now go to another area that is big. Eon works with many companies from Exxon to Aramco to others over the years. Um, so if I pick energy here, I will have the ability to either address needs into oil and gas area, renewable energy, nuclear power, energy storage, which is very popular. Now, what again, safety is a prime concern. I remember met Mr. Tillerson at Exxon. He was at that time the CEO. He said, we are very interested in this technology for what we call low probability, high consequence scenario. Things that shouldn't happen, but if they happen, um, they have an immense impact. And it's almost impossible to train that in the real world, but you can do this in our technology with augmented reality. So re safety training, reducing accidents, operator training for um, how to handle infrastructure and how to become familiar with equipment before operating the field. Uh, guidance and assistance to maintenance, repair operation personnel to improve speed, efficiency in maintenance operations. The ability to work together on complex projects remotely from one location to the other. And also the ability to identify hazard uh, situation again linked to safety safety is something that goes through most of our application in this case okay um, now let's talk about aerospace that happens to be my area so within aerospace um, not surprisingly whether it's commercial aviation defense spacecraft and satellites unmanned vehicles or aerospace components and systems Again, safety comes first, uh, reducing risk associated with complex machinery, but also operation of aircrafts. Um, maintenance and repair operation, that's a biggie. The ability to provide assistance and guidance to reduce downtime, improve productivity. Uh, remote training, or in this case, first cabin training. We have actually several customers 
some of them we announced in this month, to help train the cabin crew, improve their skills and reduce risks for accidents, um, the ability to do the remote collaboration similar to what we do between engineers, technicians, pilots, enable them to work together more effectively, and also the ability for aerospace manufacturer to use AI system to create product demonstrations. Uh, that's a biggie. And ground crew training. Uh, it's a physical space. Our technology comes very handy there. Um, virtual training for pilots. That's a good example also how this can be used. Parta simulator. We are not doing the big simulator. We're doing the Parta simulator examples. And then also the AI assistant that can provide you real-time technical support for customers and engineers. Virtual showrooms, that's something we've done over the years that enable users to explore, interact with their products in a virtual environment. Now, healthcare, we have many hospitals that we work across the world, uh, and there are a number of interesting applications that are very valuable. So in healthcare, we're looking at hospitals. We work, for example, with Children's Hospital, in Orange County, we work, for example, with the largest private hospital group in Costa Rica. Uh, pharmaceutical, medical devices such as GE, Siemens, biotechnology, and health insurance. What can you do with this there? The AI system can help you with emergency response. So that means interact in 3D models, emergency setting, learn how to respond to different types of emergency receive personalized feedback and guidance. The other one is AI-based medical device training, the ability to interact with models, learn how to use them properly, um, things like respirator, MRI devices, etc. Patient education. Teachers spend an enormous amount of time with patients to prepare them to alleviate their, um, their, their anxiety so the ability to educate patients with a medical condition, treatment options, uh, and visualize that in a way that becomes really uh, understandable for them to take the proper decision. Uh, public health education. This also is an important tool to provide the public with health issues, such as new pandemic or viruses or other things. Um, uh, and also maintenance repair operation. Uh, some of this equipment does require often um, maintenance to be properly functioning. Uh, Pre-surgical training, simulation of uh, things like looking at organs, tissues, surgery, etc. Tourism has always been a big industry and now it's recovering after the pandemic. There are a number of areas within tourism where this is applicable. Hotels and resorts, uh, airlines and cruises, travel agencies, tourism att attractions, but also the new, more popular adventure and ecotourism. That's an interesting area. Security, biggie again. We have numerous customers now in security that are using this technology for things like cybersecurity, physical security surveillance, um, big events, law enforcement, and again, emergency response to disaster management, um, such as um, the unfortunate uh, earthquake now that we have in Turkey. But also big events like the upcoming Olympics in, Fr in, uh, in France. Uh, telecommunication, in that area we see applications such as uh, wireless and wired telecommunication, mobile device applications, broadband services. How, if your router doesn't work, how can we address that? It's, um, and also, of course, the telecommunication equipment. Uh, this is not even applicable for management consulting. Uh, things like uh, uh, management consulting when helping large corporations, uh, etc. And now I, I did promise you a little bit about edutainment. So um, what's that all about? It's about the ability to do things that are compelling, learn in a compelling way. So how do you learn a compelling way? Since millennium, we've used stories. So virtual stories, whether it's uh, uh, things that are engaging. Uh, you can do stories about everything. So in this case, we have simple prompts. In this case, I gave a prompt called COVID-19 and fifth grade. So produce a story about the fifth grade 
COVID-19 that's enticing and makes it easy for students to understand. So here it talks about how the COVID was rapidly spreading around the world. It is a tiny, small creature enough to fit on the head of the pin, but has an enormous impact on our lives everywhere. And there is also the story contains educational components, right? The first part was called nucleocapsid, which was like a shell of protected virus, generic materials, etc. So it tells the story, but here's the interesting part. Not only does it tell a story, but it also identifies the key words that then are fed into the system to show and tell you and guide you in the system. So membrane, receptors, spikes, and these are also automatically generated. So, I mean, you can tell stories about almost anything. Most kids, like I, fascinated about the solar system and space. So now this talks about the solar system here. Or why not dinosaur? Always a safe bet. Um, and again, learning about different components there. Uh, or time travel. Um, in this case, uh, talking about different areas, whether it's the time during the Roman Empire or the second stop it can be Jean d'Arcs during the battles uh, or Christopher Columbus arrival to America. Um, so I happen to be now in Italy. So a visit, a story about the medieval Tuscany, right? A day in the uh, in the sun in July 8, 1464, where you follow Cosimo de' Medici, the de facto ruler of the Republic of Florence, and his daily routine, where he begins his day, following him to Palazzo Medici, following him to Duomo di Firenze, Palazzo Vecchio, Ponte Vecchio, and this all done into the virtual environment. And one of my favorite places also on Earth is Angkor Wat. So here's a story where students can join that visit, or why not Peru and Machu Picchu, or the Grand Mosque in Istanbul. Uh, so that's stories. How about games? Uh, educational edutainment games. There's many of them that you can generate with prompts now with Eon. Scavenger hunt, memory game, animal safari, obstacle course, AR discovery. Those are all prompts that are possible. You can find, identify, create quizzes, collect, memory, augment, share. So it's not limited to, to just a four basing assessment. They, now you have a number of assessments because a game in essence is allowing you to do things and challenge you to resolve puzzles or activities, hide and seek, race, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, there is also trivia, so quizzes in this case about Italy, or about aircraft models, which are also generated as a part of the challenge and edutainment aspect of learning. Uh, okay, so that was prompts for creation. Now let's move to exploration of the real world. I'm super excited about this, how you explore the real world, because that's what we do on a daily basis. We have to navigate the real world. So it kind of starts the same. You have your avatar, in the avatar, it asks you, what would you like to do? Uh, and in this case, we were going to choose explore. So being guiding assistant in the real world. Now, uh, in this case, it knows where I am. So it says, it knows the GPS position. Welcome to Via Capella in Tuscany, nearby the famous church. So it will tell me where I am. It also helps me to set up this important anchor point. Think about anchor point as a point in physical space where we know the latitude, longitude, and altitude, which then allows you, once we save this experience or this exploration, for the next users that comes nearby to trigger that experience that you created and also enjoy the same experience. So you create your persistent tracking, you say yes, you save a local photo, so the next one, when they open the application, you can see where it is on a G GPS position. And now you can start illuminate or inject knowledge in the physical space. You have that little ball that you see there, the, the yellow one, you can set the annotation point. You can choose between voice annotation, so I can say in plant, 
or I can let the AI drive it. So if I say plant, it will give me different components automatically, description and leaves, stems, roots, soils, that then it automatically generates the annotations. And while I click on one, it will generate me images, text, videos about that specific uh, top component, in this case, the leaves. And these are also, I can then place them just by moving them to, so the leaves at the right location, the soil, the stem, the pot are all rightly placed. Now I have that, the avatar knows these. So as I'm populating my room, he's able to show and tell me anything about this room. And I can go in great depth. It's able also to find it. Now let's say I don't know what this is. So then I allow AI to take a picture and immediately the AI will recognize this is a piece of furniture, it's seating and it's armchair. So I can click on armchair and that automatically generates not only the annotation, but a description about it. It identifies the subcomponent, legs, arm, seat, backrest. And it also allows me now to explore this. As you move through and point and illuminate your room, the avatar companion stays with you. It's within four meters. It's always slightly to the right in front of the camera, not to obscure the knowledge portal, the 3D objects or the AI portal. Um, and it senses where you are. Now, if you walk, let's say through a museum and you walk out a range of the anchor point, it will sense that also. And it will tell you, you are out of range. Time to place the next anchor point for a guided tour. So now you go to the next point and you repeat what you just done. You put a short description of the keyword, you create a knowledge portal for the keyword, you create annotations for them, you manually link the annotation with the physical subcomponents. And then you, you do the same thing. So at this point, you have done it, you save it, you have two options. Let's say a new user comes and sees a little mark that this is a illuminated exploration that someone has created. It can be a famous landmark, uh, like for example, Piccadilly Circus. So you click on that and you have two options. One is freestyle, so I can ask anything about anything and it will go walk to that specific object and start to tell you about, in this case, the lamp that has a white shade and the TV is mounted on the wall or whatever that is. And I can start now in a contextual world, not only to show and tell me, but also guide me and assist me in that world because the avatar knows about the, its environments. So think about this in a setting like a hospital or like a factory where I may not be able to identify all the equipment, not know what it is. And that's where this becomes very handy. The other way is a guided exploration. So let's say I don't know what to ask. So I just simply ask, take me on a guided tour. This could be extremely helpful in a museum setting, right? Um, I, let's say I'm going to Louvre, but I only want to see um, sculptures. I'm not interested in paintings and it only needs to be from a certain period. Suddenly this avatar becomes a personalized guide. I don't have to look at brochures. I don't have to look anywhere. It guides me through that process. Okay, so now let's say I don't want any of that. So I just want to enjoy the library and application framework. Then you can dive into the applications and click that button where you can explore uh, literally tens of thousands of experiences and millions of 3D assets. You can experience this uh, interactive content on your phone, on on the web, on your laptop. You can collaborate with other people using special meetings. And you can also create in this environment in a, in a different fashion. You also have a marketplace where you can sell and buy content. You can select your avatar. You can import additional models and many, many more. If you want to learn more about the AI Assistant, there is actually a long document, what's coming out March 23rd, uh, we have a big event uh, on March, March 23rd in Irvine, California, um, close to Laguna Beach. And 
then we, you will be able to actually get your hands on this. I've been playing with the beta already, and I must say this is a game changer, something that um, will, in my mind, change the way we learn, uh, train, perform, and, and play. So with that, I want to thank you for your interest, and I encourage you to reach out to us if you want to learn more about this, and also uh, try the software as we release it this month.